You are welcome to today's video lesson with Bright Edo. In today's lesson, I'll be discussing about a very important gas law and it is called the Deltin's law of partial pressure. So the first question we have to ask ourselves, what does the Deltin's law of partial pressure state? Now, this must be noted. The Deltin's law of partial pressure states that the total pressure of a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the individual partial pressure of these gases, provided these gases do not react with each other. Now, what am I trying to say here? Let me explain. The Deltin's law of partial pressure states that the total pressure, okay, which is this, and it must be noted that total pressure is given with the symbol PT, okay, total pressure of a mixture of gases. And let's say these gases are basically contained in a container. Now, this is the container that these gases are basically are basically placed okay now according to Dayton's, he basically said that the total pressure of a mixture of gases these are the gases in the course of this explanation i'll be working with three gases which is gas a gas b and gas c so the total pressure of this mixture of gas is equal to the sum of the individual partial pressure of these gases provided these gases do not react with each other now with this law we can basically bring out a mathematical expression which is the total pressure of a mixture of gas which is pt is equal to the sum of the individual partial pressure of these gases and what and what are the gases the gases are partial pressure of gas a which is the first gas okay because the law states that the is the total pressure of the mixture of gas is equal to the sum sum summation means addition of this partial pressure of these gases so it's equal to the partial pressure of gas a plus the partial pressure of gas b plus the partial pressure of what gas c that was what Deotis was trying to say. For instance, it was four gases. Let's say we have gas D including. We'll simply write plus partial pressure of gas D. So that is what uh, Deotis was trying to say for this law, which states that the total pressure of a mixture of gas is equal to the sum of the individual partial pressure of these gases, provided these gases do not react with each other in the container. Now, to all this said, let us now determine the partial pressure of the individual gases because in the course of this video class we'll be solving questions that pertain to this aspect so we have to know properly how to determine the partial pressure of each of the gases the partial pressure of gas a the partial pressure of gas b and the partial pressure of gas c so how do we determine the partial pressure of gas a which is this okay the partial pressure of gas a we determine this by using a formula which is partial pressure of gas a is equal to the mole fraction okay the mole fraction of gas a times pt remember what pt is pt means total pressure of the gas mixture for instance here was partial pressure of gas b which is uh, let's say for instance here was pb what becomes here more fraction of gas b so because it was partial pressure of gas a which is pa that's why here is a more fraction of gas a so the other question we have to ask ourselves what is mole fraction of gas a mole fraction of gas a is gotten by a formula which is this mole fraction of gas a will not be the number of moles of gas a over now you can see we are trying to determine the mole fraction of gas a that was why the numerator basically took number of moles of gas a you can see here that n simply means 
number of moles. So since we are dealing with the first gas, which is gas A, it becomes number of moles of gas A, okay? Over the summation of the numbers of moles of each of the gases. That is how it is done. So for we to get more fraction of gas A, we simply say numbers of moles of gas A over number of moles of gas A plus number of moles of gas B plus number of moles of what? Gas C. That is how it is done to get the more fraction of a particular gas. Now we are talking about gas A. So if here was gas B, what becomes the numerator? Numbers of moles of gas B over the summation of each of the gases the way it is written it is not difficult so with all this said let's determine let's impute the more fraction formula of gas a into the uh, partial pressure of the first gas which is gas a so let's walk through that so partial pressure of gas a will not be equal to let's impute this into the more fraction part so it becomes number of moles of gas a over number of moles of gas a plus number of moles of gas b plus number of moles of gas c times the pt remember what pt is pt is called the total pressure of the gas mixture and this must be noted it must be noted that the total pressure of the gas mixture is always given in a practice question as we solve practice question in the course of this class lesson you see how it works so with all this said let's quickly go over to determine the partial pressure of gas b which is pb so partial pressure of gas b how do we do this very easy similar to what we did now so partial pressure of gas b will not be equal to what since we are looking for the partial pressure of gas b what becomes here is it more fraction of gas a no it is more fraction of gas b because we are look, we are working with gas b now times what pt which is always same for all the gases and what's pt pt means the total pressure of the gas mixture in the container so that's how it works meanwhile so the next tax here is to determine a mole fraction so more fraction of gas b will not be equal to numbers of moles of gas b because i'm looking for more fraction of gas b you bring it up number of moles of gas b over the summation of all the number of moles is number of moles of gas A plus number of moles of gas B plus number of moles of gas C. That is how it's, it is done. Meanwhile, this mole fraction part, we impute it into our formula. So partial pressure of gas B will not be equal to number of moles of gas B for the mole fraction over number of moles of gas A plus number of moles of gas B plus number of moles of gas C. Just know that the denominator entails the addition of the numbers of moles of each gases because all these parameters will be given in practice question as we progress to solve it. So times the PT. Remember what PT is? It's called the total pressure of the gas mixture. Meanwhile, for the last gas, which is PC, which is the partial pressure of which of the gas partial pressure of gas c how do we get the partial pressure of gas c we get it uh, with this similar expression which is pc now will not be equal to the mole fraction of which of the gas now gas c times pt okay and how do we get the mole fraction of gas c we get the mole fraction of gas c by making numbers of moles of gas c to be the numerator over the addition of all the numbers of moles because when we start solving practice questions you see how it works well so moving further let's get for the partial pressure of gas c now which is pc will now be equal to imputing this into mole fraction we are having number of moles of gas c plus number of moles of gas A, plus number of moles of gas B, plus number of moles of gas C, times PT. So you can see how this concept works without stress. Because with all this information, we simply go ahead to solve a practice question. So if you find this video helpful, do well to click the subscribe button to this channel and also share these video lessons with your friends. So with all this said, let's progress to solving practice questions under this aspect okay guys let's get ready for the first practice question which i'll be solving step by step now what does the question says the question says a gas mixture is made up of three moles of neon two moles of argon and one mole of helium if the gas mixture exact a total pressure of 18 atm 
Now, the ATM here simply means atmosphere. The question now says, calculate the partial pressure of each of the gas present in the container. Now, how do we solve this practice question? First thing first, we have to basically draw uh, a container containing these gases. Okay, initially in the example of the introductory class lesson to this video lesson, I basically wrote down three gases, gas A, gas B, and gas C. But since these gases now are known, what was the first gas mentioned? It was neon, okay? And neon is given with a symbol to be NE. And the other gas in this container is argon, whereby it's given with the symbol to be AR. And the last gas mentioned here was helium, which is given with a symbol to be HE. And these gases have their respective number of moles because that particular value is very important in solving practice questions pertaining to this aspect. Whereby the numbers of moles here for each of the gases are the numbers of moles of neon is 3 moles, the number of moles of argon according to the question is 2 moles, and the number of moles of helium according to the practice question is 1 mole. Now, to all this said, let's basically write out the mathematical expression for Delta's law of partial pressure. Remember, Delta's law of partial pressure states that the total pressure of a mixture of gas is equal to the sum of the individual partial pressure of these gases. And what were the partial pressure of the gases? Or what were the gases first? It was neon, the equal to the individual partial pressure, the sum of the individual partial pressure of the gases, the sum of the partial pressure of neon, plus the sum of the partial pressure of the next gas, which is argon, and lastly, plus the sum of the partial pressure of the last gas here, which is helium. And the total pressure of the gas mixture was given to be 18 atmosphere, ATM. So with all this said, let's solve for the partial pressure of each of the gases. Whereby the first gas we have to walk through is this gas, which is a uh, 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 neon gas. So we have to get the partial pressure of neon. And how do we do that? We simply write here the partial pressure of neon is equal to, according to the explanation, since we are looking for the partial pressure of neon, it becomes what? Mole fraction of which of the gas? Neon times Pt. Remember, Pt is what? The total pressure of the gas mixture whereby the mole fraction of neon will be determined. And for we to get the mole fraction of neon, we simply use a mathematical expression, you know, to get mole fraction of a particular gas, you bring the number of that moles of the gas to be in the numerator, whereby here becomes the number of moles of neon, since we is what we are looking for, the mole fraction, over the addition of all the number of moles, which is number of moles of neon, plus number of moles of argon, okay, all the gases involved, plus number of moles of what? Helium. Whereby this information will bring it here back to the expression. So partial pressure of neon will not be equal to, let's bring this back here. So we have a number of moles of neon over numbers of moles of neon plus numbers of moles of argon plus numbers of moles of helium. Okay, times what are Pt. Whereby partial pressure of neon will not be equal to, let's impute our parameters into the formula. So what becomes the number of moles of neon gas is 3 moles. So here becomes 3 over, what's the number of moles of neon also? 3 plus what number of moles of argon? It is 2 moles plus what number of moles of helium? It is 1 mole times what's the partial pressure of the, or, or the total pressure of the gas mixture is 18 atm. Whereby the value we are to get, the partial pressure of the gas, which is neon we are to calculate for, will be in atm also. For instance, this particular uh, uh, value was in another temperature, sorry, another pressure SI. Let's say here was 18 mmHg, which is 18 millimeters of mercury. Mm means millimeter and HG is an element mercury. That's why it's pronounced millimeters of mercury. So the answer we have to get will be in mmHg also. That is how it works. Meanwhile, here is 18 ATM. So our answer we have to get will be in ATM. So let's solve. 3 over 3 plus uh, uh, 2 plus 1, okay, 
times 18. We are having 9 ATM. So 9 ATM is the partial pressure of this gas, which is neon. So here becomes 9 ATM. Whereby we are to get for the partial pressure of the next gas, which is argon. And for we to do that, we simply follow the step. The procedural steps are as given here. So we have to write first, partial pressure of argon will not be equal to what? The mole fraction of the gas, which is argon, fine, because we are looking for the partial pressure. So we'll take the mole fraction of the gas argon times what? The PT, whereby mole fraction, okay, of this gas, which is argon, to be calculated, we simply write here to be the number of moles of argon. Remember, if you are looking for mole fraction of a particular gas, we'll bring the number of moles to be in the numerator. So over number of moles of, or the summation of all of them, which is number of moles of neon plus number of moles of argon plus number of moles of helium. So bringing this information here, partial pressure of argon will not be equal to number of moles of argon over number of moles of neon plus number of moles of argon plus number of moles of helium times PT, which is the total pressure of the gas mixture. So let's impute parameter. So partial pressure of argon will not be equal to what's the uh, number of moles of argon? It is two moles over the summation of all of them. Three moles, which is number of moles of neon. Okay, this is number of moles of neon plus number of moles of argon now is also two moles. Okay, two, two moles plus number of moles of helium. Was it? It is one mole. Okay, find the partial pressure of the gas mixture, which is 18 ATM. Remember, our answer is to be placed in ATM also. So let's impute. So 2 over 3 plus 2 plus 1 times 18, that is 6. So we have it here to be 6 ATM for this particular uh, gas, which is the partial pressure of argon. So here becomes 6 ATM, whereby for the last okay for the last gas which is the partial pressure of helium so the partial pressure of the gas helium will be solved by saying partial pressure of helium is equal to mole fraction of which of the gas is it neon argon or helium it is helium because we're looking for its partial pressure okay so we have here to be the mole fraction of helium times okay times the pt which is the total pressure of the gas mixture so how do we get our mole fraction of helium we simply get it by saying number of moles of helium remember whenever we're to get the mole fraction of a particular gas we basically bring the number of moles to be in the numerator okay over number of moles of the summation of all the gases number of moles of argon plus number of moles of neon rather plus number of moles of argon plus number of moles of helium so this information will bring it here so partial pressure of helium will now be equal to number of moles of helium over number of moles of neon plus number of moles of argon plus number of moles of helium times pt so what becomes the partial pressure of helium okay partial pressure of helium will now be equal to the uh let's impute our, our, our parameters into the formula so what number of moles of helium it is one mole so here become one over the summation of all of them which is three plus two plus one times pt which is 18 atm whereby when we press this in our calculator we get one over three plus two plus one times 18 that is three that is three atm so you can see here we've gotten the answer for the partial pressure of helium to be what 3 ATM. Now, to know if our answers are correct, let's check if all these values for the partial pressure of the gases are correct. So, we simply come back to our initial uh, formula and remember the total partial pressure given the question was 18. Let's add all the individual partial pressure of gotten. So, let's see if we have to get 18 ATM. So, what was the partial pressure of neon gotten? It is 9 ATM. Plus, what was the partial pressure of argon gotten? 6 ATM. Plus, what was the partial pressure of helium gotten? It is 3 ATM. So, let's press that in our calculator. So, 9 ATM plus 6 ATM plus 3 ATM. That is 18 ATM. So, all this shows that the answers to the partial pressure of the gases present in the container are correct. So, if you find this video helpful, do well to click the subscribe button to this channel and also share these video lessons with your friends so you get ready for your own practice question.